John, I know your, your focus is on your team, but uh, given the fact this is your first game back here uh, in, in D.C., was it what you thought it would be different? How would you describe your return? It was cool, for real. I mean, it won't really nothing to worry about. You know, we already played them once. Um, I think it would have been different if fans was there, but the fans wasn't there. But, I mean, it was good to compete, see some of the guys I, I messed with. That was it. Kelly Eco? Hey, John, uh, there have been things, you know, in this six-game losing streak that you guys can take away that are positives. But overall, especially tonight, how would you assess how the defense played in the second half? Uh, we just – defense hasn't been there. You know I mean? We haven't been playing the right way that we're supposed to have been aggressive, have been the team that play hard. Um, that's what we did early on. Until we get back to doing that, we're going to have our lapses. is what we have. And um, I think we played okay, but we didn't do a great job of switching and being aggressive when we needed to and things like that. Jonathan Fagan? As much as the atmosphere couldn't be what it would have been in normal circumstances, do you think you were still able to show that organization, fans who might have been looking at you for the first time, show what you can still do and what you could have done if you'd stayed there? Yeah, they see it. They've been seeing it all season. Cassidy? Hi, John. Um, obviously, this return to Washington is a milestone in your in your new chapter with the Rockets. But when you look back at your career and the challenges you faced in Washington, how does this year, starting in a brand new place, then how it started and now the injuries, how does this season compare when it comes to the challenges you faced in your career? Um, it's kind of hard to say because of COVID. You know what I mean? So we got so many protocols we're dealing with with that, and then you know injuries come and play in the game. But uh, having some people who are not there for safety protocols or because they got COVID, uh, it makes it a little bit more different. So until it's back to like normal, I can't really uh, express more on that question, to be honest. Darren Hayes, Haynes. Hey, John. John, this is Darren Haynes from, uh, from Washington, D.C. Um, can you talk about more just about your return back here to, to D.C. and what it meant to be alongside Bradley Beal and just the experience uh, and those experience that you've had, especially seeing some of your former coaches. Um, it was great. I mean, I think I spoke on it with the athletic of what I wanted to get off my chest and, and let the past be the past. And other than that, I'm not really talking about being with the Wizards or anything like that no more. Um, I have great things I did that I want to continue to do and remember from being with Maya, right beginnings. Um, I adopted the school of Ketchum Elementary. Uh, so the fifth graders know we got an agreement that I got with those guys. I want them to keep going. I'm in the community assist award, helping out Southeast DC. Those are things I continue to talk about, but anything with the wizards or how to trade went down or anything like that. Uh, that article was the last time I'm gonna speak on and I'm past that and moving forward with my new franchise. Chase Hughes. Hey John, uh, welcome back to DC. Um, you mentioned there not being fans there. I'm just wondering, how did that change the night compared to how you pictured it would go? Um, like, I mean, it was difficult. I mean, like, um, you know, I play for the fans. I play for the city. Um, I'm an emotional and passionate person. I've been for 10 years. So, you know, I know I wanted to see those guys here and see them here to support me. Um, it definitely was difficult. I also wanted to have my first game that I would have played back in DC, had my mom in the stands. Um, I mean, she's been there with me for everything and knowing she's not here, that was difficult. She would probably be in, you know, row 10, section G or front row if she was feeling healthy. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to have that, but I know she's watching down on me and, and very proud of me of the comeback I had. But uh, it just would have been dope to be in those seats and see her there. But other than that, it's cool. Jonathan Fagan. <laughs> John, how difficult is it for a team on a losing streak and to have injuries, you've had the injuries, but now to have them keep coming and coming, how difficult is it to not be demoralizing in that kind of situation? Well, that's why I'm the leader of the team. That's why I have to keep these guys afloat. Um, it's something we deal with. And a lot of teams might have to deal with it throughout the year. We can't really control the aspect of that. Uh, me as a leader and a veteran guys and keep these guys above float, um, keep working with them, keep pushing them every day and keep giving ourselves a chance to fight. Um, it's a battle that we're going through. But let's say it might be a team that might go through it two weeks from now. Um, we can't dwell on that. So we just got to take advantage of the chance you have and win the game you're supposed to win and uh, just play hard. That's the most important thing we could do. And the easiest thing we could do is go out there and play hard every night. 
Thank Brian you. Brian Hey John, that's what I was going to piggyback on. I know there's no moral victories in, in basketball, but you know, how proud are you of those guys? You know, still y'all still competing through adversity like this. Oh, it was great. I mean, that, that's the most important thing about it. Nobody's putting their head down like I'm telling them every day, keep fighting, don't give up. Um, it's the bump in the road, but always be the next man up and just give ourselves a chance. All you can do is go out there and play hard and give yourselves a chance. Um, and that's all we're doing right now is just giving ourselves a fight. Brianna Holmes. Hey, John. So I know looking at, you know, seeing Alex on the sidelines for these games that you played against the Wizards, I mean, how does it feel to um, show, you know, the, someone who played a huge part in your recovery and you coming back to play in front of someone like him? Uh, I think he's embracing it. He's enjoying it. Um, I think he wished he was on the other side of being there with me because all the hard work and dedication we put in the last two years. But um, it was just great to see a lot of familiar faces and, you know, I know there's a lot more familiar faces I wish I could see, but I didn't get the chance to see because of COVID. And uh, I know a couple of people that's probably throughout this arena that's been supporting me since I was a kid for 10 years that I didn't get a chance to see because they got laid off because of the pandemic. Uh, I wish them the best. I um, know they played a major part of me becoming a, a, a young boy to a grown man. Um, they got all my love and support forever. I wish the best for them. And um, if I have the opportunity when I come back next year, we can have fans. I definitely want to get those people in the stand, so I will be looking forward to buying a lot of tickets for people that have looked out for me and helped me grow up to be who I am today and let them know that I haven't forgot about them. All right, we have time for two more questions. Hoop District. John, good to see you. Uh, what was working for you so well in the first half? Uh, you were pretty aggressive getting to the line, finishing at the rim, uh, had the big dunk. Um, uh, I still feel like I played the same way in the second half, aggressive. I just didn't get a lot of calls that I got in the first half. I got 10 free throws. I didn't get any in the second half, and I felt like I was still attacking. Um, give credit to them. They did a lot better job of loading up on me and making me uh, kick the shooters. And um, like I said, I'm believing my guys, no matter who it is shooting the ball, I see these guys work on it every day, so I want to make the right play. And um, I missed some easy shots that I wish I would have made, like I did in the first half and the second half. And then come, uh, a couple of my guys missed some shots. We felt like it was good shots. And uh, they were making shots. And that's basically determines the game. And last question, Jay Rochelle. Hey, John. Uh, good to see you back in D.C. Uh, you guys are 11 and 16 now, sitting in second to the last in the West. I know it's a lot more game up to be played. And you guys have been competing, you know, as best as you can, given your circumstances. Do you all think it's still possible for you all to make a playoff push in the position that you guys are in right now? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of time left. Um, most important thing is getting guys healthy, um, staying safe away from COVID and not having the safety protocols because that's serious. You can miss seven games, I mean, seven days or 10 to 14 days. But um, yeah, just keep fighting. I mean, it's a hole that we're in. Uh, we know it's a process of rebuilding with a lot of people we added new, um, get rid of James, um, adding a lot of young guys into this mix, trying to get them to understand the game at a different level. And uh, that's my job as a leader, that's job to make the job easy for Coach Silas and the coaching staff. And I believe in this organization, everything they're doing and where we're moving forward. And uh, I got to keep continuing to be the leader when we're losing and when we're winning.